networks change hands here to the tune of more than a billion euros. Whether it's old masters or a sofa from Salvador Dali, the TAFE of Art Fair in the Netherlands specializes in nothing but the best. Munich gallery owner Markus Marshall comes every year. Old masters are his area of expertise. Within a short time of opening, his stand is bustling with potential buyers. I, must be concentrated. I need to concentrate as things are very busy. You can't tell just by looking at people how much they know, what they want and who they are. You have to pay attention. <laughs> Dealers make around 40% of their annual sales here in Maastricht. This Picasso is on sale for 25 million euros. Early modernists are in demand. Works from the 19th century are also popular. Five to six figure sums are standard. But these kinds of prices also make the industry attractive to forgers. To guard against them, Marcus Marshall first investigates the origins of a work before he agrees to buy it. Where we get into problems is with attributing artworks. So it's not so much is the picture genuine or fake, but whether it really was painted by the artist to whom we're attributing it. And to clarify that, you need science. Is it possible that some of the works at Tefov could be forgeries? The fair organizers say a panel of over 170 experts examine all of the works before they go on sale. We have here We've gathered together here the best and largest number of experts in the world, from America, from around Europe. And of course, it does happen that in some cases they can't agree. So then they take a vote and the majority decides. But even experts don't always get it right. In 2011, one of the biggest art forgers of all time, Wolfgang Beltrucki, was sent to prison. Experts were long fooled by his paintings. Only a scientific analysis of the paint proved they were forged. Hans Steffen from the Cologne Institute of Conservation Sciences says more high-tech examinations are needed. More often than not, forgers paint over other works. X-ray technology can best reveal the truth. Beltraki and other forgers are good painters. They really immerse themselves in the works of each artist. So when you look at one of their paintings, it looks good. If you look at the back, it looks good too. So you have to look closer and use tools like the X-ray or infrared technology. At Tefaf, any works that arouse suspicion are subjected to closer examination. For the past five years, the fair has employed technical experts to help the art historians. This painting is one that has been brought in for closer scrutiny. If a paint is about 100 years old, you would expect that it is not completely smooth, that there are maybe some cracks and other, uh, let's say, signs of, of the aging over that period. And you can actually see that there are some very tiny uh, damages and, and, and sort of maybe a beginning of a crack, but it's very, very little. So that gives some doubt to whether this painting is really from that period or not. We later heard that the painting was not released for sale at the fair. The experts couldn't be sure about its authenticity. Meanwhile, gallery owner Markus Marshall has numerous interested customers. We have a number of people who have reserved items and will make a decision today. A museum is also interested and will confirm its decision later in the day. It's going well. Business is booming, but at times it relies on good faith. What counts in the end is the price. A fake painting that remains undiscovered can be just as lucrative as the original.